I think one thing it's important for all of us to appreciate, both Department of Defense, other practitioners, interagency, industry, and other partners, is we're really entering a new strategic uh, phase for the United States. And I think that's reflected in a couple of things that have come out just recently. So we have a new uh, national security set of policies, including presidential orders, that are really shaping and defining how the United States is going to approach the cyber domain strategically in the future. And obviously, that strategic approach is going to drive how we operate as the Department of Defense, as the interagency, frankly, as a country. And I think what we're seeing in, the, in this new strategic level um, policies is a, it's a will to really use America's power, diplomatic information, military and economic, but to use our, our capabilities in a much more proactive and a much more assertive way. And we clearly see that reflected in kind of those follow-on documents, which are the national security strategy, the cyber national cyber defense strategy, and the Department of Defense cyber strategies. And there's a clear nesting, you know, linkage between those presidential level directives and then the policies that flow from that. Some key things that we saw in that that are important for everyone to understand is the notion of defending forward. And as a country, clearly we're focused on defense, defense of the homeland, our national security. I think a recognition that we can't just defend within our borders, within the firewalls of our networks, if you will, that we've got to have a presence outside of the, the continental United States, outside of our you know, traditional boundaries, to do things like engage day to day with the adversaries who are posturing and positioning and doing things outside of our boundaries that are affecting our security internally. So those are two critical aspects. I, I think the, the other one that, that's written into the defense strategies is prepare for war. We've got to recognize that in the cyber domain, we're in constant engagement. And we've got to prepare for nation state war. Again, we've seen the Russians, the Chinese, North Koreans, Iranians use all of their national capabilities against us. And we've seen particularly the Russians do that to achieve strategic effect, you know, to shape elections. I think the recognition that we're now in you know, a contested state at the national level against nation-state adversaries. That's a fairly significant shift in both recognition of the conditions we're in and in the approach we're going to have to take going forward. And so this national strategic effort really is underpinned by some capabilities that allow, at least in the Department of Defense side where, where I have the most uh, knowledge, underpinned by some truly significant and real capabilities. So I'd say first, you know, we do have clear policy and guidance to the forces, and we've had you know, based on these directive, authorities have been delegated now to the Secretary of Defense to take certain actions, and authorities develop, had been uh, set down to the combatant commander, you know, U.S. Cyber Command commander and his subordinates to be proactive and take those actions in cyberspace that we do in other military domains. So I think the categorization of cyber operations as traditional military activities, which is a specific kind of a doctrinal term, allows us, allows those commanders to take actions, you know, with all the right authorities and the deconfliction and all of the right processing, but to be more active as maneuver commanders, as operational commanders. And that's important as we operationalize the domain. So I think we have authorities now that have been vested to the right levels within the Department of Defense chain of command to act. We now have forces. So it's taken five years to build starting in 2012 to 2017. We've gone from having no cyber forces in the Department of Defense that were able to maneuver conduct offense or defense actively. We now have the 133 active duty teams that are all fully fielded. Now they're not you know, fully trained and equipped and ready yet, but they're all in being. We have 21 National Guard and Reserve teams that are being formed. So we have this force now of 154 teams that we can employ to do these operations. So it's, you know, it's one thing to argue for authorities and aspire to do things, but now we have a force that is fully capable of operating. And the focus for the force going forward and the commands is to build readiness in that force. And I'll talk, you know, innovation is going to be important to that. I'll talk to how we build those forces in a moment. The last part of, of the equation that's really important is we now have leadership. We have commanders, particularly in the Department of Defense and leaders in the other agencies, starting with General Nakasone as the commander of U.S. Cyber Command, all of his service component commanders. They all have depth of experience in cyber operations. Every commander who commands a major formation inside of Cyber Command is in his second or third operational tour, either as a, either as a commander or a senior staff officer. So we have now the policies and authorities to act. We have the forces to act with. And we have commanders who are experienced, knowledgeable, who have worked together, who can now take the leadership role in maneuvering that force effectively, again, to achieve the objectives they're assigned. So we've really kind of described the state of play, the conditions with authorities and strategy and where we have forces. 
The next piece is really how do we build the appropriate readiness and, and capability in the force? I, I think in order to do that, this is where we, we need to tap into all, you know, all of our intellectual ability to do that. And this is where tapping into to, to academia, you know, graduate programs in cyber operations and cybersecurity are critically important to building this force out. And, and why do I say that? Well, in order to really build readiness to build a force, it's not enough to focus just on tools or platforms or capabilities. You've got to look at the full range of things that are required to build a capable force. That's doctrine and policy, training, operations, leadership, all those areas where, it, where a focus of academic study to really dig into those areas with, with the depth that, frankly, the operational force can't do today. You know, the forces that are acting, that are conducting missions, they don't have time to stop and study themselves, to study doctrine, to study organization. But, but you could really bring in a much wider set of academic capabilities and, frankly, different thoughts in terms of how you build up the capabilities of that force. You know, education and training and, and a graduate degree with somebody focused on, you know, doctrine, organization, training, manning, logistics, all those things that you need to build a force. That's where, you know, an academic focus would really help build out that readiness in the cyber force. So we spoke about, you know, the new alignment of authorities and policies and, and leadership in the force and being the focus, and it's been stated by Secretary Mattis, and it's been, you know, stated as a priority for General Nakasone, is now building readiness in that force. And we talk about building readiness, we, we talk about innovation and tools and technologies, but really to build readiness in a force, it takes more than just innovation in the technology field. To, to fully build and create a capability, you've got to look at all of those kind of doctrinal aspects to building, building a force, and that starts with policy and doctrine, organization, training, leadership, facilities and material, all of those things that are part of kind of our normal DOD processes, you have to look at all of them. And you have to think about how can I innovate, not in just one of those areas, not just in technology or not just in tools, how do I innovate in ways to develop new policy, thoughts about policy? How do I innovate in doctrine? How do I make doctrine that is as agile as tools? And if we talk about the speed of delivery of cyber tools, how about changing the speed of delivery of cyber doctrine? And so I think you've got to take into account all of the aspects of building readiness. And you've got to bring in a, a multifaceted team to look at that. You need practitioners, you need operators, you need policy folks, but you also need academics. And this is an area where places like the National War College and the program here, by bringing together a wide variety of academics, can really drill into those, those areas deeply, study them, and come back with reasonable results. Again, working in co-creation with, with operators and others, but really flush out the elements of that process to increase readiness of the force more, more quickly. And again, I think an academic setting will really let you be more innovative in thought. You're not restricted by current operations. You're not necessarily restricted by day-to-day. -day. You can really give some deep thought to how you're going to build out readiness in that force you know, more broadly.